Okay, here are solutions for perfect problem four for math 211. Um, I don't know how this video is gonna go. I'm gonna kind of figure it out as I go. It might be a bit of a disaster, but what I'm gonna try to do is solve this cryptogram here. And so the idea with the cryptogram is each of these letters represent a different digit from zero through nine. And when I add these two words together, I get the third word. So I gotta figure out what goes where. Um, it's a little bit overwhelming. I like to have these grids here, although this grid might be a little bit overwhelming as well. But let's see if we can figure this out. There's a little hint, fortunately, from me, and it says first determine T and R. So the nice thing about T and R is R plus R has to be equal to T, or at least R plus R, um, that sum has to be equal to the ones digit in T. Maybe I carry 10 over. And then T plus T has to be equal to R. Well, again, the issue with the ones digit, and you have to be careful, you might have carried one over here. But maybe we could still knock a bunch of things out. Could R be equal to zero? Well, no, in fact, it cannot. Uh, what's a no is maybe a maybe an X. Sure. R can't be equal to zero because if it were, zero plus zero is zero. T would also be equal to zero, and that can't be the case. Could R be one? No, because one plus one is two, but two plus two could not leave me with a one here. Uh, what about three? Three plus three is six. Six plus six? Well, that's 12, which has a one's place of two, and if I carried over a one, it would get me a three. So I think... Uh, R could in fact be equal to three. What about four? Four plus four is eight. Eight plus eight can't leave me with the four. Five, five plus five is zero. Zero plus zero can't leave me with the five. Six, six and six is 12. Two and two cannot leave me with six. Seven, seven and seven is 14, but a four and a four cannot leave me with a seven. Eight and eight is 16, but a six and a six can't leave me with an eight. Nine and nine is 18, but an eight and an eight cannot leave me with a nine. In fact, I just figured out that R has to be equal to three. So maybe a yes here, I don't know, what looks different from an X, I guess is zero. Kind of weird, but fine. Um, and if I know that R is equal to three, then I know that nothing else is equal to three, so I can go throw in a bunch of X's here. Cool. And if I know that R is equal to three, three plus three is six, so therefore T must be equal to six. So I can throw another one of these weird O's here, which I don't know why I'm using that to represent yes. But what are you gonna do at this point? and cross out everything else in the rows and the columns. Okay, still a lot of room to go, but fortunately I have another hint. Then determine O. Well, if R plus R, if R is three, three plus three is six, note I wouldn't carry anything into this column here. I'm gonna put a zero up there to remind myself of that fact. That might not seem to have any bearing on O, but it will, because T is equal to six, and six plus six is 12. I write a two here, which will eventually be a three, Wait a minute, if that's a three, you must have carried one from this column. Yep, you're right. H plus H must have been enough that this column carried a one over to this column. And furthermore, T plus T, that's six plus six plus one more is 13. I must have carried a one over here. So what, why is that important? Well, now think about this column here. O is some number that when I add it to A, it does not change A. Ah, O must be equal to zero. Nope, because I carried one. Right, so I carried one, I must be getting nine out of O in order to not change the value of A. So that tells me two things. First, that O is equal to nine. So I can go and fill out my grid a little bit more. And so nothing else is nine and O is nothing else. Uh, but furthermore, nine plus one more, I'm already up to 10, I must have carried one over to this column here. Okay, now what do we do? Well, there's a few places you can go from here. I like to pick on N first. I didn't carry anything into this column. A number plus itself. So E can be just about anything at this point. Um, but when I add that together, I must get an even number. So think about what N could or could not be. Well, uh, N certainly could not be equal to zero. And the reason n can't be equal to zero is because, well, is that true? No, that's not true. No, that is true. No, that's not true. Okay, slow my roll a little bit here. Uh, e could not be equal to zero, because zero plus zero plus zero more would leave me with zero, and if e is zero, n can't also be zero. So e certainly could not be equal to zero. Um, if e were equal to one, one plus one would leave me to, with two, so n could be two, but n could not be equal to one, because one's an odd number, and a number plus itself and zero more can't be odd. And by that same logic, n can't be equal to three, five, seven, or nine e either. So I've crossed out some possibilities for what n could or could not in this case be. 
Um, similar logic for T, I've already figured that out. R, I've already figured that out. Uh, where to go next? Maybe now I'll focus on this first column here. M plus F must be equal to P. Uh, informally, that tells me M and F are small and P is big, sort of. Because if M and F, M or F, are too big, then when I carry one more, I'd get a double digit number and I only get a single digit number down here. Um, I also know that P has to be relatively large because I'm taking two numbers and adding another one to it to get up to P. What else I know is that neither M nor F nor P can be equal to zero because if I was writing a number and it had a leading zero, there wouldn't even have been a digit there in the first place. So M is not zero, F is not zero, and P is not zero. So that'll cut down on a few possibilities. Uh, what else? P cannot be really small. It couldn't be equal to one, for example. Uh, because I'm already carrying one and I can't have zero out of M and F combined. Uh, P also cannot be equal to two. And the reason P cannot be equal to two is because uh, I would need either M or F to be equal to zero, the other one to be equal to one, and the one carry to get me to a two there. So I can kind of deduce that much. Uh, similarly, M and F can't be too big. I know that P is not nine. So the largest P could possibly be is eight. If I'm getting eight out of P and I got one in a carry, that means M plus F can sum to at most seven. So if M plus F sums to seven and neither one is zero, neither one can be equal to seven, nor can either one be equal to eight. So there you go, starting to fill this up with a couple, with a lot of X's. I can take advantage of the fact that I know I carried one into this column, so H is relatively big when I added two H's together and maybe got a one carried from this column, maybe not, I don't know yet. But when I added two H's together, I got a number big enough to carry one. So therefore, H is certainly not equal to zero or one or two or three, which I already knew, or four. Could it be equal to five? Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's see, if it were five, I get five and five is 10, but I could have carried one over there, which could make E 11, which could work out. Um, but what maybe we could focus on at this point is I now know that either A or N is equal to zero. And that seems useful if I could just figure that out. Um, I wonder if either of those will get me into a contradiction. If N is zero right here, then E must be equal to five, which is still a possibility. Um, that would mean this E is also a five and I would have carried one, so H would be equal to two. Ah, it's not. No, okay, so H cannot be equal to two, but H also could be equal to seven. Um, and that does look like a possibility still. So I don't think I can cross that out. Slow going now, but one more I can cross out is P cannot be equal to five. Because if P is equal to five, I got one in the carry, so that means M and F must sum to four. But M and F can't sum to four because neither one can be zero. They can't both be two. So my only option is one of them is one and one of them is three, but three is already used up. So what I just figured out is P cannot be equal to five. Well, I would have liked to have deduced the whole thing, but um, I'm not sure I'm capable of doing that. So I think I'm going to stop at this point, and I'm going to copy down what I have so far. So I don't know what M is. I do know that O is equal to 9. Uh, T, I know to be equal to 6. H, I do not yet know. E, I do not yet know. But R, I know to be equal to 3. So this number plus F, don't yet know it. Man, there's a lot I don't know. A, I don't know. T, like we just said, was six. H and E, we already said we don't know. Three. And when you sum these two guys together, we get P, again, unknown. A, unknown. R, which we figured out was three. E, which is unknown. N, which is unknown. And T, which is six. And I do have some information on the carries. I know that I carried here. So I got this picture. Maybe at this point I can do a little bit of guess and check. Well, let's see. I only have two possibilities for zero. It's either A or it's N. Uh, where should I throw it? I don't know. Let's try throwing it on N. So let's say guess and check. Let's make N equals zero. Well, let's see what that does. If N equals zero, I get a zero right here. 
Now, I didn't carry anything into this column, so this plus this must leave me with either 0 or 10. They can't both be zeros, because then e and n are both zeros, so these guys must be 5s. So the minute I conclude that n equals 0, I also conclude that e must be equal to 5, which puts a 5 here, and it carries 1 up into this column. And so then if you think about what you added up here, what h must have been equal to, I'm not trying to sum to 5, I'm trying to sum to 15 because I carried a 1, but I'm getting 1. So what that means is that the h's must have been equal to 7. Um, and what does that leave me with? I have m that uses up a lot of digits, right? I've, I still have left. I have 1s, 2s, 4s. And five I just used, six I had already used, seven I just used, eight. So I have one, two, four, and eight. And the question is, could I fill in one, two, four, and eight to make this thing work out? Uh, I think I might be able to. Because what I could do is, A, I kind of get for free. So um, I can put anything I want here and here. So really focus on M, F, and P and what you want to put into those spots. Um, I need to take two of those, add one to it, and get it to sum to the third. So p cannot be eight, for example, because if I made this four and two, that's as big as these two numbers could be, and adding one more, that only gets me seven. It doesn't get me high enough to be equal to eight. Uh, p cannot be equal to one. I already knew that. Um, and p cannot be equal to one, two, and I just decided it can't be equal to eight, so therefore p must be equal to four. If P is equal to 4 and I carried 1, what that means are M and F are 1 and 2. And by process of elimination, uh, what does that leave me with? P is my last, no, I already got P. A is my last letter, and A I kind of got for free. A would be equal to 8. So I think I have a solution here. Let's see if we fill those all in, if it would work. Uh, pretty good guess and checker. It's always easier when you know the answer. So P could be equal to 4. A could be equal to 8. This is going to work out here. 3 plus 3 is 6. 5 plus 5 is 10, so I write a 0 and carry a 1. 7 and 7 is 14, plus 1 more is 15, so I write a 5 and carry a 1. 6 and 6 is 12, plus 1 more is 13, write a 3, carry a 1. 1 and 9 and 8 is 18, so I write an 8 and I carry a 1. And then 1 and 1 and 2, so I could put a 1 here and a 2 here, would give me a 4. Or I could have put a 2 here and a 1 here to get a 4 and leave everything else the same. That's a weird way to write this. 2, 9, 6, 7, 5, 3 plus 1, 8, 6, 7, 5, 3 should sum to 4, 8, 3, 5, 0, 6. Uh, so those are my two solutions there. I kind of got there with the guess and check method. Uh, I think I'm going to end this long video here.